All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special edition of Breaking Through the Glass Ceiling. And on today's episode, the special edition, I have the Nova Venom basketball team. So, ladies, could you go ahead and introduce yourselves? Um, my name is Taylor Pierce. My name is Kai Squirrel. And my name is Nikita Morris. So, how y'all doing today? Um, I know we're in the midst of a pandemic, so sports isn't taking place the way it usually does. But how are y'all feeling? Um, I'm good, honestly. Um, I kind of wish my AAU team sort of played a tournament um, this during this time. But at the same time, um, I give my coach much respect for caring about the safety of everybody and their health. So, um, other than that, we've been doing practices all together. And um, we still make sure to stay together, um, talk to each other in the group chat, um, still having that team bonding going on. So I say we are, we're all doing pretty good. I agree. Yeah. And like Kaya said, like, I'm disappointed that we don't have a season, but I understand. And at least we're like still seeing each other like most of the weeks and getting together and stuff. So y'all are able to kind of remain in game shape. Yes, yes yeah, of course. Yes, it's um, helping us stay in shape is also helping us for our high school season that's coming up. Um, not sure if we're going to have a high school season either, but either way, I still think it's a really good way of keeping us in shape. Yeah, so if we do have a high school season, we'll be prepared for anything. Mm -hmm. All right, let me ask y'all this. When with the pandemic going on and y'all, you know, still playing basketball with each other, have y'all been limited as far as other outside activities to prevent um you know contact uh, contact tracing or anything um, well we we haven't been able to get together inside as much but we have we've had some team bonding activities and stuff outside so that we're all safe and um yeah, yeah and we also have our practices outside so we won't have to go to a local gym and possibly pick up something from there. So um, we've had all of it outside. Um, our workouts were six feet apart until we started getting used to each other and we started passing the ball to each other. And eventually, um, like in between uh, each drill, we would use some hand sanitizer, which I think is a great way of staying safe. Yeah, we also all bring our own balls to practice mm -hmm. to limit. Oh, wow. So I, mean, I was always wondering, you know, especially with basketball, how do you, um, you know, with the NBA and the WNBA, they were in a bubble and a wobble. So I was wondering, like, how do you do, you know, still stay safe during this time? But, you know, I understand you say you bring your own balls to practice. I think that's cool. Yeah. And our coach also makes sure like um, like our teammates would let him know if we're out of town. So um we basically like text him, tell him that we're out of town and how um, like coming back, um, he makes sure that we quarantine for at least two weeks mm -hmm. in order to return to practice. So yeah. I think that was also a really good way of preventing possible coronavirus to the entire team. Yeah, like when I was out of town for a few weeks, I didn't practice, but I was still able to show up and cheer everyone on and make sure everyone was working hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good, you know. Um... So let's talk basketball. Um, when you like, first of all, so who's the vet on the team and, you know, who's been playing along? How long have y'all been playing together? So actually we're all vets, mm -hmm. which is a yeah. funny thing. And um, this is only our second season playing together. Um, Nova Venom was a new organization starting from last year. And so we all got together um, and, uh, Actually, Nikita goes to my high school, so it was easy to kind of um, recruit her and bring her to this new organization. Taylor, we met at tryouts, so and we had no idea who she was. And so we all just kind of um, tried out, got the team together. It was a great experience last year. And this year, actually, our team is a lot better. Um, you know, still sad that we couldn't play with the great team that we have, but it's okay because we're all a sisterhood. We're all a family. And we all get along with each other very well. There are no arguments, no bad blood. And that's what I love about our team is that we're all for one and one for all. Yeah. And the organization itself has grown so much. Like just from last year, 
Like last year, there were about like maybe 15 people at tryouts, but we had like close to 60 this year. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. So let's see, uh, Kaya, your nickname is KD and Baby LeBron. Who gave you the nickname? Um, so my my coach, my head coach and assistant coach for AAU gave me that nickname. Um, they referred to me as KD because Kevin Durant's so like versatile, like he's long, but um, you know, he's like 6'11, but he can also, you know, have he has point guard skills as well, dribble the ball, um, easily get um past a defender. The thing about LeBron is that I'm called that a lot because LeBron's really good at driving in the basket and his will to want to win um, and the strength that he has. Um, he basically bullies people around all the time. So that's where I got my nickname from. So I, I like how you really said, like, LeBron is good. What you're really saying is I'm good at driving to the basket and I'm going to make people pay. So I gotta, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. I, I got to yeah. ask you, who's your favorite between the two? Kevin Durant all the way. Oh, really? <laughs> so you, okay, he is my favorite, yes. Do you think he's better than LeBron already, or you still think he got some work to do? Um, Well, obviously right now he's not exactly playing <laughs> because of his injury, mm -hmm. but I would say when Kevin Durant comes back that he will be better. I put money on it. I, I'm very positive with my answer. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nikita, your nickname is the – is flash how did that come about so basically uh when our team first started um our first practice, speak up a little bit louder when our team first started mm -hmm. uh we had our first practice and coach loves to run us that's one of the main things to make sure that we stay in shape and stay conditioned so i used to do track when i was younger so i was already pretty fast so i remember we had this one room where we basically just had to run across the court and back and we had to do it about i would say maybe eight times well way more than that <laughs> so we started that off and i was obviously no offense you guys i was you know there and back up the court in about 10 seconds or so <laughs> and that's basically where the name just came oh wow so on a fast <laughs> break you're the person that's usually the one scoring for sure <laughs> Everybody yes. not there is like the absolutely. Yes. Right. She is definitely the fastest on the team. Yeah. A thousand percent. <laughs> <laughs> so and Taylor, your nickname, the GOAT, the Enforcer, the Technician. Yeah. Um, I have a lot. So for the technician, I got that at one of our practices in the beginning of the season, we were going over um a new inbounds play. And the coach coach corrected me on something and by the time like we got to the next practice like i've remembered it and that's just where the technician was born but um do you want to explain the goat um the goat <laughs> actually i came up with mm -hmm. um so basically after every single practice my team and i like we would take a snapchat and just kind of post it to our story you know just for fun and um this time i took a snapchat and i actually recorded a video of taylor and um, in the video, I like typed like the goat and I don't know why I did it. I just did it. And then all ever since then, it kind of just stuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where her goat nickname came from. That's awesome. So listening to you ladies talk about your nicknames, that sounds like an all-star caliber team right there. Um, how have... Yeah y'all been able to uh, destroy and intimidate your opponents um well our coach he is very enforcing on showing up like to win like when you go to a tournament and you play a team you can't joke around you can't like just act like, oh yeah, they look soft, we're gonna beat them. No, you have to have that military mindset that you're gonna destroy everyone that you see. So that's basically what we've been doing. We always show up in practice. We always have matching uniforms and matching shoes, even down to the socks as well. We have to have matching socks. We have to just go in and look like we're a military and we're basically going into war. 
Yes. Speaking of military, coach always says to us, when you go into war, you don't see anybody laughing, do you? And I was like, wow, that's actually a really good reference to make because it's like, you're right. Nobody is laughing when you go to war. And it's like the same thing with basketball. When you're playing before a game, even the professionals or college athletes, like you don't see anybody goofing off and laughing. Um, you basically have to be focused into the game and it's all about the mindset. Yeah. Coach always like emphasizes that we have to stay disciplined and stay on top and mm -hmm. stay serious. Wow. So when you look back over everything, um, how do you, I'm saying, when you look back over everything and you look at, you said you don't smile, how often do you play friends? And how hard is it not, how hard is it to stay in that, um, I'm going to say Mamba mentality going into these games, especially if, you know, you're playing like a close friend on the opposite side? Um, well, I would say for me, it's not hard at all. Um, I don't really, coach always says, even if you do have a close friend on the opposite team, um, don't view them as that, view them as the enemy. So that's always how I take it. I take them as, okay, I'm playing like you're not one of my friends and my team is going to destroy your team. Basically, that's the yeah. mindset that yeah. we all have. So y'all got that, um, that Russell Westbrook mentality. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so and, is is there a delay? Are you shaking hands immediately after cracking jokes or do you have to decompress? Um, I would say it all depends on if I lose or win. Um, if we win the game, obviously I'll be happy. I can talk to them after the game. Um, but I would say if we lose, it would just kind of take me a while and I would have to decompose, yeah. like you mm -hmm. said. Definitely. So it's all about whether I win or not, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Nikita, talk about how it felt to win the Nova Venom Rookie of the Year award. It felt amazing to win that award, to be honest, because when I first joined the team, I was always put down at the five, so that would be the center, but mm -hmm. I was nowhere near a center just because of my speed, my versatility. So when I joined the team and the coach said, first of all, our team is positionless. You can play any position that you want to. Mm -hmm. But for me, I was put in number spectrum, a three or a two. So like a shooting guard, you know, all that stuff. So just seeing how much I've grown from playing on previous teams to this team and being able to like bring the ball up, being able to shoot because I was never told to shoot or bring the ball up and using my speed to my advantage. It just felt really great to be awarded rookie of the year for all the hard work that I put into for that season. How long did it take to get uh, used to being able to do more, essentially, with the ball? I want to say it took the first month or two just to kind of get my ball handling a little bit better. But once I got the hang of it and we were playing in games and we were just having fun, beating teams, and just building that good chemistry, it just felt really good in the end. Okay. Now, Taylor, you was – um, you was named the best, well, voted the best teammate. Can you talk about what that means? You're the team captain, but to be voted the best teammate. And I know sometimes as captain, you got to be, you know, the one to hold everybody kind of accountable sometimes. So what did it feel like to be um, voted as the best teammate by the players and the coaches? It felt really good. Like I always try and cheer on my teammates and make sure that they're playing to the best of their ability. And like, getting the recognition for that felt really good. Like as a team leader and a team captain, I try and lead by example. So mm -hmm. getting the recognition felt really nice. Okay. And Kaya, can you talk about the dedication award you won and what it meant for you? Um, it meant a lot to me. Um, I won the dedication award because I'm, well, first I never missed a practice like ever. Um, my dad coached me when ever since I was in fifth grade and um, like I played for CYA, um, Lady Storm, all these different teams. And for all of those teams I played for, I've never missed a practice or any event or a game. 
So um, that's where a lot of my dedication comes in. And also putting time into the game outside of just the team. Like I do my own studying. Like I'll um, watch any and all basketball, um, research on certain players to see how how like they move, um, basically study the game. So I would say like I was like a student of the game. And I think that's where a lot of my dedication award came from. When did y'all first become fans? Of basketball? Yeah. Like when did you become, I, I must ask two part question for each one of you. When did you first become fans of the sport and what player made you fall in love with the sport? Okay. So I first become, became a fan of the sport um, because my parents would always like encourage us to at least try a sport. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if we didn't like it, we didn't have to play it. But if we did, then we could stick with it. Um, I've tried multiple sports. I've tried baseball, um, soccer, swimming, uh, lacrosse. And then when I started to try basketball, I realized that I've had a love and passion for it. So I wanted to keep going with it. So ever since I um, haven't played any other sport besides basketball, I've been playing basketball since second grade, I believe, first or second grade. Um, so that was great. And um, ever since then, I've been just going up from there. Um, I would say my favorite player, 100%, like we were talking about earlier, Kevin Durant, um, he inspired me to become a better player than what I was. Um, playing with other teams, I've always been told to be in the post. Um, I'm not a post player. Maybe at the time, because I was just taller than everybody else, because I just grew faster. Um, I knew that as I would get older, my height would, I would stop growing at some point. So right now I'm 5'7", and that's definitely not a post player size. Um, that's guard. So I knew for wanting to play high school and college, I had to develop some kind of guard skills. So looking at Kevin Durant, um, him being a guard, but also like keeping his post moves, I think um, really helped me out a lot because I knew a lot of post moves, but I just wanted to develop a little bit of the guard. And the thing about Kevin Durant is I like how he has both. So um, studying KD throughout the years has really helped me develop not just even more post moves, but more guard moves as well. Okay. Who want to go next? <laughs> <laughs> so... I've loved basketball ever since I was a little kid, just due to my dad loved watching sports. We would always watch basketball, football, soccer, just any sport. But I always loved watching basketball. I just thought that it was a cool sport. And there are so many of those dominant players at the time, like Miami LeBron, Dwayne Wade, all those good ones. So I started playing basketball. I want to say committed to it in about fourth grade, just because like Kaya said, my parents wanted me to try all the different sports and stuff, but I really got committed, I want to say in fourth grade. And the player that I've looked up to would have to be Dwayne Wade, to be honest, just because of how versatile he was, just how dominant he could be. I really looked up to that. But the player I look up to now is Luka Doncic, just because like, he is a European player, but he just dominates. Whatever team he's playing against, he just dominates, whether it's a three-pointer, mid-range jumper, just dunks, everything. I just think he's a really dominant player. So I've been playing basketball since about first grade, and I've done, like, a lot of different sports. Like, I've done softball and soccer, basketball or um, swim, softball, volleyball. I've done a lot of different sports, but throughout all that time, basketball is the only sport that I've stuck with because I, I love the game so much. And I think I really became more competitive in fourth grade, but it's always been a sport that I've loved. And I think a player that inspired me, I would probably say Kobe Bryant because of his mindset. Mm -hmm. Like I, he inspires me to go into the gym and aim to be a better player by the time I've walked out and like always keep working no matter what. I got to agree with her on that. So. Definitely Kobe Bryant and MJ when it comes to mindset. And for me um, personally, I'm just, everybody knows this, but I'm very physical when it comes to being on the court. I like to bully people around. So um, 
a lot of people would refer to me as like Christian Leitner and Christian Leitner. I'm a huge Duke fan. And, um, so Christian Leitner is like my favorite Duke of all time. So watching him and seeing how physical he is, I mean, sometimes you do a little too much. That's you can't get away with, but he did. Cause you know, it's Duke, but I still kind of learned from him in a way like being physical. And also he was also a big man as well having guard skills. So I think having the mindset and being versatile is really good um, way of becoming a great player. Uh, I love the fact that y'all students at a game, um, as you can see right here, Kobe, <laughs> uh, yeah. my favorite player of all time. Can y'all talk about your favorite Kobe moments? And if you have any favorite Gianna moments. Ah, ah. Um, I would say, my favorite Kobe moment. I mean, I was I was born very in 2000, so um, obviously I've seen 24 Kobe. Mm -hmm. My favorite personally is eight. I love number eight Kobe. So going back and watching the games from when he was eight, or just getting into the league, he's about you know 18. That's when I would love to watch him. Um, just watching him dominate, it was just like ridiculous. Like especially being that young and going from high school straight into the league was incredible seeing how like dominant he was compared to these other guys that have been in the league for years. So I would say just in the beginning of his career, that's my favorite Kobe moments to watch. And so that's what I would say for myself. I completely agree with that. <laughs> but at the same time for me, Kobe was just a great person off the court as well. So I loved seeing how he gave back to the community. I feel like that's a great thing that more athletes should do is just use their platform, not only for sports, but to inspire other people to want to be a good person overall. Yeah. And I don't think I could pick a favorite Kobe moment. He's just such an amazing and versatile player. And he has like, there's so many good quality. Yeah. Uh, it was, um, January sucked. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other yeah. way to put it. Uh, For everybody, not even basketball fans. Everyone. Yeah. Um, you remember where you were when you found out? Yes. Actually, I was in the gym. Um, I was at the gym um, getting ready to get a workout in, and all of a sudden I see an alert on my phone from TMZ, and I was like, this is definitely fake. And so I clicked on it and it literally started popping up everywhere. And then that's when I was like, okay, maybe they mistaken it for the wrong person. But I found out, you know, it was Kobe. It's very devastating. Um, I think what got me more is um, his daughter as well, because she had a lot of dreams of being a WBA player. And that's one thing I'd say I love about Kobe is that he cared so much about female sports, which I think is great, especially for a big male role model like him. So, you know, look at the – notice the female sports. Notice the great things that we're trying to do. Um, Kobe helped us a lot in uh, the female aspect of it. And um, I would say the thing about uh, Gianna is that, you know, she just wanted to be a WNBA player so bad. And, you know, she was so amazing for her age. And um, it's really devastating to hear about her as well and how she couldn't live to her full potential or – have the dreams that she wanted to come true. Yeah. Yeah, it was, um, you know, it was definitely one of them tear shedding moments. I was working. And so my first thing when I first read it, I was in the middle of editing a video and I was like, I kind of had this mama mentality. Kobe would be like, boy, if you don't get yourself up to edit. So did you, we, did you stop playing? I know you said you was in the gym. Did you throw up more shots? Did you take time to like try to process everything? Well, first it was just me and my dad in the gym. And when he, I got the notification from a water break and mm. we were all just like, we were just in shock. So we kind of had to pause for a second and like, think about it, read up on it just to see if it was true. And unfortunately it was. And I would say about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes later, we went back to shooting, but literally the whole time while we were, um, while I was working out, we were like talking about it and how um, we couldn't believe that it's happened. We talked about the good Kobe moments that he's had. And um, 
I would say my dad is a huge fan of Kobe Bryant. So this really hit him hard, like Mm -hmm. to another level. So he kept talking about the different moments he had and throughout Kobe's career and the things that he remembers. And he was just reminiscing and um, just to see it later that day, we just, just to see it on the news everywhere. It was just really devastating. So um, it's very sad time. And even not even just basketball fans, like, Everybody who knew him, I would say, was really impacted by this. Yeah. You uh, mentioned the WNBA uh, segue. What's, uh, who's your favorite WNBA teams and players? You each, uh, if you each can answer it. I, I'll go, yeah. I'll <laughs> say the Mystics. Okay. You know, at home. <laughs> um, uh, the Mystics, um, they also just won a championship. And um, not – well, last season they did. And um, I was kind of proud – I was, like, really proud that the female were getting recognized because I actually went to a playoff game, um, Mystics playoff game uh, last season. And just to see the amount of people that were there was, like, incredible. Like, you would think that it was a guy's game. Mm-hmm. So to see the support – I kind of wish the support was there the whole time. But to just to see the, some kind of support – um, during playoff time was really, really great to watch. And um, to see them on TV winning a championship, I think that's awesome just because they're, it's our hometown team. And uh, if you look at the other Washington teams from every sport, besides like maybe the Capitals or Nationals, like like the Wizards, they haven't won a championship in I don't know how long. But it was just good to see a female basketball team from our hometown win that. I would say my favorite team, I've been watching a lot of the Indiana Fever. I really like the camaraderie that they have. And my favorite player is also from that team. Uh, Her name is Erica Wheeler. And the reason why she's my favorite player is because she actually went undrafted, but then she got invited into the All-Star game. And then that's where she finally got her chance to like make her mark and shine and show all the hard work that she's been doing. And then she got a chance to be on the fever. Um, I don't think I really have a favorite team. I like to watch like the different teams and find out like the di- see the different skills and aspects like each individual player has to bring to the table and see how like I can apply that to my game to make myself a better player. So I gotta ask you this. I always wondered this. Um, you get an opportunity college basketball time come up you go to any school in the world are y'all going to UConn where they get everybody or are you going to try to go make a legacy somewhere else I'll take it um I would definitely say I would love to make a legacy um just because going to a team like UConn yes they're very good and successful but you have people sitting on the bench that or Gatorade, won Gatorade award and things like that. So it's very hard to get playing time as well. Um, I would just say starting legacy somewhere else and building the program is a lot more like memorable and getting the school's name out there so everybody can know about it. Um, I think that's a great way of just also showing your skills. Um, Cause you know, other people can easily outshine you on other teams. I think, um, Basically, going to a team to build a program um, and letting getting your teammates involved as well, I think, is a great way of letting a no name be well known. I completely agree. Yeah, so <laughs> I kind of took the words right out my mouth. I completely agree. So, what y'all saying is that in about a few years, that we don't have to worry about UConn having that same dominance. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nah, but um, anything else before we get out of here that y'all want to tell the people or where they can find your highlights? Um, You can find all of our highlights on Huddle. Um, You have our names listed below. Um, Kai <laughs> and Nikita Taylor. Um, You can find our Huddle. Um, We also have uh, Nova Venom YouTube, so I would check that out. Um, we have an Instagram as well. I think Noah Venom 703. I'm pretty sure. And um, Twitter, um, all of that you can find Noah Venom on. 
for us personally, you can also find us on Instagram. My Instagram is just my name, and I don't know what there is. <laughs> but yeah, there, it, we're, it's all our names, so you can easily find us on there. Um, definitely go follow the, all of No Venom socials. Um, you can find us on there as well, and the rest of our team. And you, you guys will see us together, and how hard we work, and um, how much of a family we are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I appreciate y'all time. Thank you for coming on this episode of Breaking Through the Glass Ceilings. Folks, make sure y'all check out Nova Venom. These ladies are coming. And before you know it, they're going to be playing on television everywhere. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Yeah, it means a lot. No problem.